Welcome is right. We're happy that you're here, and we are happy to be together on this first Thursday. Uh, we gather tonight in the midst of our falls and our failings and also our great faith. We gather from here at our soul sanctuary, going now to wherever you are watching or listening from. We believe our family and friends gather with us from heaven, where they urge us forward, always further into the work, presenting a wounded and anxious world with, with the reality of God with us. Now, we assemble in the name of Jesus Christ, our King, in the hope that we can continue our journey toward greater love for ourselves, uh, others, and for greater commitment to Christ, always present in the sacramental graces. My, fr my friends, in terms of the timeline of the Catholic Church, this apostolate is very much in its infancy. Most of a child's future is a mystery to the people who hold a baby and take care of it. When you are uh, taking care of a baby's many needs, you have no idea what will the child offer the world. Will this baby offer the world something good? Uh, something necessary, something helpful. We believe that for a child to develop properly, he or she must be nourished and protected. We, here at the base of this apostle of the returning king, strive to nourish and protect the movement entrusted to this place. We want this apostle to grow straight and strong in the church. We want it to remain focused on Christ and his presence in the Eucharist. We desire to do exactly what our mother, the queen of the church, wants us to do and to point ever so constantly back into the sacramental life of the church. We strive on, always forward, together as a group, we here and also each one of you. When I think of the Catholic Church and this time of reality TV and constant news and information, um, I think not of this moment, but of the church in five years' time. If one is imagining what the Catholic Church will look like in five years' time, one cannot help but wonder about this apostolate. Will it be ready to serve? Will it be faithful to its foundations? Will it be helpful? Will it be useful? The answers to those questions, to a greater or lesser degree, rely on our decisions today. Each one of us. Modernization has connected people, but isolated them too. We watch people who have nothing to do with us and pay close attention to them. And we ignore people around us who carry their, our sacred duty within them. So we're watching celebrities, people we'll never meet closely, and we're ignoring the people in our homes or in our families within whom we find our sacred duty. Our, our sacred duty is within our loved ones. That's where we're supposed to be serving. We seem to have been tricked into thinking that the most relevant events can only be found on the news when the most relevant events are actually happening right around us, right around us physically. 
My friends, apostles all over the world are serving. They're doing something to further this movement of love that we call the Catholic Church. Jesus Christ came, he lived, he died, he rose again. He established a structure to be the home of the Eucharist, where he remains physically present to resonate out to anyone who craves time with him, who wants to know him, who is curious about how the Son of God thinks. Jesus does not change. He does not make mistakes. And he loves us unconditionally. Jesus Christ, present in the Eucharist right now, knows you and I personally and intimately. As the saying goes, he knows us better than we could possibly know ourselves. He loves us personally, intimately, completely. Jesus doesn't love us because we are perfect. He loves us in our imperfection, in our daily struggle, and our personal human timeline with its moments of scorched earth where we are really injured in some way. And he loves us in the moments where he draws us into recovery, emotional recovery, physical recovery, psychological recovery. Christ is there. Our Catholic faith is about putting people in relationship with, the, with God. Our Catholic faith is about helping the created person to be in relationship with the Creator. It is about Emmanuel, God with us. It is about service to the people created by our Father. It's about taking care of each other. And it is about the planet on which we live, where all of God's children live. God our Father made this planet to be our home. It's so beautiful. Outside, here at the sanctuary, beauty is all around us. The infinite, the infinite intelligence present on the planet is all by itself uh, convicting in terms of belief in God. We have to take care of the planet. You wouldn't want to live in a messy home. Yes or no? In a toxic home? Would you like to live in a toxic home? Absolutely not. <coughs> the people coming after us shouldn't have to live on a toxic planet. And I, I don't think, I know that, I don't think people understand the offense against God that that is. So let's think about it, you know, let's be aware of it, let's be alert to it. Now in terms of this apostolate, there was a man dying in, a, in, a, in the hospital. And he was afraid to die, he was frightened. Someone, one of you, or one of us, gave him a booklet entitled, For Those Who Fear Death. And he read the booklet, and it did the job. And here's what it said from Christ. It said, my beloved one, change is coming. You feel this. You are preparing to finish your time on earth and begin your time in eternity. That day, the day of your death, will be a joyful day because you will return to me. Do you consider your death joyfully? Perhaps not. Perhaps you are afraid. Dear little child of God, I want to help you with any fears that take you away from your peaceful consideration of the next life. You see, in our humanity, we fear death and suffering. I understand this perfectly because I also experienced a dread of suffering. I did not fear death, though. I knew that death would bring liberation for me and that it, I would be free of the constraints I experienced in my body. Dear beloved one, it will be liberation for you too. 
When your body ceases to live, your soul will become fully alive. There is nothing to frighten you. I will be there for you. I will take you to me and comfort you. You will feel safer than you've ever felt before. The man felt comforted. His fear left him. He said he felt that God was with him and that the grace that came with that gave him confidence. Possibly for the first time, he said, he fully trusted God. He put the booklet under his pillow and he kept it there. And when someone asked him how he felt, he said, I feel fine as long as I have this booklet under my pillow. This is how he died, trusting, confident, unafraid. That is Catholicism, my friends. That is this apostolate. That is both our identity and our mission. It is our mandate and our great privilege to spread God's message of love far and to spread it widely, to connect people directly to the Father who created them in love, every person to show people that this artificial measuring stick that, which we inflict on human beings uh, to determine whether they are a success or a failure, that's not how God sees people. God views success very differently than we. Where will our apostolate be in five years' time? The apostolate of the returning king will be found serving God's children. We will be spreading the message of love. We will be urging people to protect the soil, the air, and the water on the planet given to us by God. All around us is beauty. The infinite order reflects the mind of God. If you want to study the mind of God, you simply have to look out the window at trees, animals, water. Why must water be protected, my friends? Because we are made of water. God's children are made of water. Nature is not God, but nature does reflect the Creator and God's intellect and His hopes for our happiness. To serve God's interests, what an incredible privilege. What an incredible privilege to be called so personally to be considered as possessing the potential to impact the plan that God holds for people. I mean, it is worthy of reflection, the dignity in our call to apostolate. If you know God through this apostolate, then you have been chosen to serve in a time of change, it must be said. We together have been invited into a plan uh, that has established itself with very little delay in our Catholic Church. We have moved quickly, yes? You might ponder that in your day. You might ponder that in your day. Ask God, God, why? Why this apostolate? Why now, God? Why me? If you then look around your day at the people in your family, your community, your work, the answer will come to you very personally and specifically. God established this apostolate so that while everyone is distracted, we will hold course. Learn to love ourselves and others better over time with proper foundation and guidance from heaven. We will hold course. We will submit to growth and development as people. We'll know our place. Uh, the true mark of humility is knowing your place. We will learn to know our place. Knowing our place, humility, brings such sweet relief. One is liberated to serve in a happy and detached way. When one recognizes it, their place. People often ask me, did you hear about this? Have you heard about this? Did you hear about this? What do you think the answer is? It's almost always no, I haven't heard. 
I mostly don't hear much about anything. I try not to hear a lot. I want my mind to mostly hear about what God wants me to know and to do. People behaving badly today, yesterday, I can read about that later, maybe, or not. <coughs> Today my job is to serve the plan God has put down before me, not on the news, not somewhere else, around me. How many years do I have to accomplish what God needs from me? I don't know. I don't know. And neither do you. So we cannot and we must not be distracted. Do you understand? Yes? Recently, my husband said, oh, you want to read about this? I said, oh, I don't think so. And he said, this is about a miracle. And I said, we don't believe in miracles. We rely on miracles. We know all about miracles. It's how we get through our day from morning <laughs> to evening. Why would a miracle at Nock surprise me? Nock is my favorite place, shrine in the, in the world. But a woman was healed of very advanced MS. She was ready to die. She was brought to Nock for a healing service. And I did read the article that he directed me to, and it was beautiful. These are her words. The only way I could describe it, she said, is like a whispering breeze. If I could paint it, it would be like a meadow with soft grass blowing gently, and there is a tree with very delicate cobwebs. It was beautiful. Now, the mother was taken over in the healing mass, on her stretcher. And when the bishop came down, holding the monstrance with the Eucharist, she was healed. She said it was a magnificent feeling. She said, I didn't go to knock that day for a cure. There were people walking around in perfect health, but full of anger and jealousy and resentment. They were the sick ones. I had a wonderful husband, two beautiful children, and lots of love. I had everything that everybody would want. The only thing missing was good health. Now, she was healed totally. She was cured. God is good. Why do I tell you this when I feel miracles are so common and when we hear about them so much? Because some things are changing in the church, but nothing important will ever change. Nothing important will change. The Catholic Church is an international movement of love with Jesus Christ at its center. He remains present in every tabernacle and every Eucharistic Adoration Chapel. Miracles happen regularly. Most priests are faithful men who imperfectly remain faithful and serve the enormous mystery of God in the sacraments. We, the lay people, my friends, we each have a role to play too. The role we play will further the international movement of love, yes, and our personal cause also, because God is far more generous than we. Yes, yes. Yes, we can hope and expect to die like the man with the apostolate's little booklet under his pillow in trust, in confidence, and in recognition that while we can't explain it, God is with us. God will be ready to receive us into eternity where we will be creative, attached to our loved ones, and full of maturity and happiness. That is where we're going. That's our future. We don't have to understand the mystery, my friends. We simply have to remain faithful to it. We have to serve it. God bless you.